Okay, ten reasons why you should vote for or against independence in Scotland. Uh, it, it was, it was. I tried it. It's too tricky to to speak and draw at the same time, so I've pre-drawn some of these things. Uh, so first, a national identity. Now, a lot of us we don't like to talk about this because um, it sounds like we're being sort of ethnic nationalist and saying who's Scottish and who's not. But it, it's the it's the it's the elephant in the room there. You, you know, it's the thing that underpins most of these discussions. So it boils down to you know the, the the more if you if you feel mostly or completely Scottish, you're more likely to favour devolution or independence, and if you also feel particularly British, more likely to favour the union in some form. Okay, it's not a perfect relationship, but there you go. I mean, that that underpins a lot of these discussions, and you know even even the most careful people discussing these things will start talking about we. You know, this is what we want, uh, while claiming that it's not about identity. The second thing. Democratic deficit uh, has either been addressed or not. Now, I didn't know how to draw that, so I've gone for that comic writing you used to, to, to we pretend that you were doing something artistic at school. Uh, so, the, that's, um, the argument before the evolution was that people voted, they tended to vote Labour and they got Conservative. There was democratic deficit, it didn't get the government you voted for. Before uh, before devolution, or at least before ninety seven, so some people, uh, yes, supporters will say, well, actually, you've still got a democratic deficit because you're still voting for a conservative. Uh, oh, excuse me, you're still voting for a Labour government in Scotland, but getting a conservative government. So that that problem hasn't been addressed. Now, okay, so so some people will see, you know, that, that the Scottish Parliament is a sort of decent compromise in that regard. Uh, the third constrained. Powers now, the yes yes camp will say, well, you, you, there are lots of areas in which you can't use the powers you have effectively. So you think of something like fuel poverty, where uh, you, all you can do really is install central heating and insulation. You can't control the price of fuel, and you can't control the level of benefits. And the the the, the argument against that tends to be, well, you you should really should use the the powers you have before you you you, you ask for more. Uh, so you might you know so idea is you, you're more happy if you use the powers you have. The fourth, sticking up for Scotland. Well, the only way to sort of uh, show pride in Scotland is to elect a Scottish government. Now, to some extent, the the argument there is that that's already happening. Uh, so it's kind of dry, yeah. dry stick. That um, you're getting to, you know, uh, oh, well, well, the cliche is the best of both worlds. So you're already getting a Scottish government within a union, you've got you know, an SNP government standing up for Scotland within the union, best of both worlds and all that. Number five is the big economic argument. You'll either be better off or you'll be worse off. So you'll either be £20,000 worse off or £500 better off or something like that. So I think in the olden days we would call that pocket book voting. Uh, so you're either going to be better or worse off. Now, it's this, this not a particularly sophisticated argument in that one. You know, people are People have really come up with these calculations on the back of an envelope, but it, but it tends to be based on uh, what was it? Uh, oil, you know, uh, Scotland's share of the oil, Scotland's share of assets and debts, and what will happen with the economy after independence. You know, what will be people's behaviour? Will they invest less or more? Will they be able to put up taxes or put them down? And so on. Okay, number six. Uh, how scary is it? Now they used to say that independence was scary because you were you were becoming a nation state, you know, set adrift from the rest of the world. Now you're part of a European Union and part of an international community, so not so scary anymore. So that's that's the that's the monster and Pac Man. Uh, now the, the the argument against that is is that you know that what you've now actually got now is indie light, and so it's not worth bothering with. I wouldn't stick with that argument. That seems a bit of a nonsensical. Uh, number seven is now. This is much more important. I think this is about state versus market, or this debate about uh, socialism versus neoliberalism. I think if someone uses the word neoliberal, they tend to think of the devil. So that's the devil. And I couldn't think of anything to draw about the state, but that's a market. So the this is a good debate because now people are thinking, well, what sort of state do we want? Do, what what sort of uh, involvement do we want the government in in social affairs, and to what extent do we want to invite the market? And I think that's invited some attention from the rest of the UK in a context of you know age of austerity in the sense that the the UK state is becoming smaller. Number eight is to do with uh, the ability of a Scottish government to increase equality with better 
policies. Now, to some extent, that might be more high tax, high benefits, but that, that debate hasn't really played out uh, to a great extent. It could also be about gender-based equality. Uh, because, what, or at least with devolution, there was a sort of movement towards you know, better female representation, which might translate into you know, more you know, better uh, gender-based policies. Of course, gender is not just about women. Uh, now, the counter-argument tends to be, at least with the financial side, that the best way to increase equality is with a broader base. The more people you involve in your group, the more you can redistribute money, and I think that debate is still playing out. Uh, the number nine is about personalities. So, I, I mean, a lot of the discussion is about we simply don't like the Conservatives. George, George Osborne is smug and uh, he reminds us too much of Thatcher. So I got that off the internet. That, uh, when I drew that, I realised that, that that is supposed to be George Osborne dressed as, as Thatcher. Uh, now, the, the counter-argument, at least if you're not a Conservative person in Scotland, is that you can vote Labour and keep the Tories out and still have a Scottish government and a UK government. The final thing is about emotions and gut feeling, which is really, I think, how a lot of people are going to vote. They're just going to go for how they feel, and there's nothing wrong with that.